So in this video, we're still looking at input-output matrices uh, and consumption matrices, but this time we're going to calculate production to match demand. We haven't spoken about demand yet, uh, but let's go back to a previous video so we can just talk a little bit about that. Uh, now, in this video here, we uh, calculated the inputs required to produce this much. And I made a point of saying that we wanted two units of energy, three units of raw materials, and three units of um, manufactured goods. So that's eight units in total. Eight in total. And to do that, we needed a Q, an input, of 1.9, 1.9, and 1.7, which is, um, my maths is going to fail me here, it's 5.5. So we had inputs of 5.5 and, and outputs of 8 in total. So the difference between those is 2.5, and we can use that uh, to meet some sort of external demand. So uh, if these were equal, we'd just be... Um, creating energy and raw materials and manufacturing goods, but we wouldn't have any surplus. We wouldn't be able to meet the demand of some other outside economy. We wouldn't be able to export goods, let's say. But given that we have um, a, a difference here of 2.5, that means that we can meet an external demand. So we can say that, um, we can say that, we can say that outputs, minus inputs is equal to the amount left over to meet demand. So D is going to be demand here. And you'll remember from a previous video, that video here, that Q equals CP. Um, where C is our consumption matrix. So we're going to use this little piece of information and we're going to use this uh, to generate a couple of other formulas that we can use. So I'm just going to sub CP in for Q into this. So we can say that we can say that output minus input, but we're going to use CP for input now, equals D. All right, and now we've got a small problem here because I'd like to factorize this to put P on the outside, but to do it, I'm going to need uh, an identity matrix here. I'm just going to factorize this by putting P on the outside, and then identity matrix is what's going to be left over, minus C. And that's going to be equal to demand. So finally, I can get this P by itself, this production by itself, by moving I minus C, which is a matrix, to this side, but when I move I minus C to this side, it's got to be the inverse of that. All right, so we've done a little bit of work there, but it's all to create this. Production, the, the amount of production required is equal to I minus C to the negative one uh, times the amount of demand that we're trying to meet. So now that we have this information, we can actually use it inside of a question. Our question, uh, given the consumption matrix this, find the production that will match the demand five energy, two raw materials, four manufactured goods. So it's as simple as putting it into our formula here. P equals, now the, our identity matrix is going to be one, one, one. Uh, minus the consumption matrix, which we can see here, all to the negative one, so all of that to the negative one, and then multiplied by our demand matrix, five, two, four, those are the things we want. All right, we should just be able to type that direct into our calculator and get a good answer from that. All right, so to have, in order to have enough, to do enough production, to have enough surplus to meet the external demands of five to four, we need to um, produce 19.69 of energy, 17.19 uh, of raw materials, 
and 18.65. Um, now, you should write that in a sentence, 19.69, 17.19, 18.65. But it's important to understand what you've calculated. Um, there's a consumption matrix. We've been asked to provide for an external source, an external source to our economy. Uh, now, in order to meet the external demands, 5, 2, 4, um, which is P minus Q, we need to create a P of 19.69, 17.19, and 18.65. That's calculating production to match demand.